Hi everyone and welcome to this Valkyrie sound tutorial on footsteps. Everyone who makes sound design tutorials on YouTube has a footstep tutorial, but hopefully this one is a little bit different. A good movement setup includes the sounds of clothing too, so as well as designing an adaptive system that changes what sounds will play depending on what surface the player is walking over, we'll use the same system to trigger the sounds of clothing as well, depending on what the character is actually wearing. We're going to be updating the animation blueprint to check surface and clothing types. We'll place notifiers in the animation sequence and put together a couple of sound cues for the clothing movement. We're going to use the footstep assets from Epic's shooter game demo, which you can find in the learning section. I'm also going to be using my own sounds for the Foley and I'm also using some recordings from the Alien Isolation game itself. First we're going to set up our physical materials. This will let us tell the animation blueprint what surface the character is walking on. So if we go to edit and then project settings, type in surface, then enter each of the type of surfaces that you want. We're going to use the metal and rubber surfaces, so make sure that you have those. In the content browser, right click, click on physics and then physical material open it up and then change the surface type to metal, rubber or whatever it is that you're using for your project. Next in the character blueprint add a string variable called clothing type. So we add a new variable, change the variable type to string and then name this clothing type. We're going to use two clothing types, the jumpsuit and the spacesuit. I'm not actually going to use any spacesuit sounds, this is really just to demonstrate what we can use the setup for, we be using a different sound for that type of clothing. Add this as a set node, which as you can see here we've peeled off from one of the sequence outputs, and we set the clothing type there to jumpsuit. We have to type that in. Then right click on the event graph, and type in 1 to get the keyboard event 1 and 2 for the number 2 input. Hook up a set clothing type node, dragging it over and then set and in the top one for number 1 type in jumpsuit and for number 2 type in spacesuit. I've then hooked mine up to some print strings so when I press the 1 or the 2 button I'm also going to get told what type of clothing has been called. Now if we go to the shooter game demo from Epic, with the main content folder selected, search for sq underscore fs. And here we have grass, metal and tile footstep sounds. So select the metal and tile footstep sounds, right click, asset actions and migrate. In this dialog, untick the audio settings box because we don't want that. We only want the sounds themselves. Click OK. And then you want to navigate to the content file of your own project. Once you're in there, select folder. You should be able to copy those files over and you'll get a little pop-up message here just to confirm that it's been done. That's all we need from that project. So now we can go ahead and shut that down. Foley is shorthand for movement sounds that aren't footsteps. To create the sound cue we're going to need for this, right click in the content browser, go to sounds and then sound cue. This is one I've already prepared. And in here you can see that we have a few WAVs that have imported from my Cyberpunk sound pack and from recordings of Alien Isolation as well. These are mine and these are from Alien. So my sounds are a little bit louder compared to the Foley sounds from Alien Isolation, so I've used a mixer in each instance just to pull the sound down and bring it more in line with the Alien Isolation levels. And then with all of the mixers and all of the Alien Isolation WAVs selected, right click and add a random node. That will automatically hook it up. From that we're going to add a modulator node and we're going to change the pitch min and max to 0.85 and 1 and the volume 
0.9 and 1. That's going to add a little bit of variation to the sound so it's not always the same. We're going to do the same thing again for the metallics sounds. These are the sounds we hear in Ripley's jumpsuit for D-rings, zips, that sort of thing. And again, we've got mixers on each of these sounds so that we can bring the volume down to a similar level in the Alien Isolation recordings. I've also added a few empty inputs into the random node. This means there's a chance that an empty input will be selected instead of one that actually has a sound assigned to it. You can see here as well that I've also adjusted the weightings for the connected inputs, reducing the likelihood that these metallic sounds will play. That's because they're, they're pretty distinct sounds and we don't want them playing too often because they'll be very recognizable to the player and it could just end up being noise that could be uninteresting, dull, or even distract from the gameplay experience. With everything set up, we're now going to move on to the character animation sequence. We get to this by going to the content browser, mannequin, animations, and then the third person run sequence. When you first open this, you'll see the character running on the spot and an empty notifies track here along the bottom. Hit the pause button at the bottom and swing the camera around so you can get a good side view of the movement. Using the tracker, scrub along to find where the mannequin's footstep hits the ground. If you're using the standard setup, the foot might not actually hit the ground, so you've got to work out roughly where it would hit. So you can see a foot there where the heel is making contact. At that point, right click on the empty notify track lane and click add notify, play sound. Do this for both feet. Using the insert arrow to the right of the track name here, you can add a new notify track for Foley and for Foley Metallics as well. They're gonna be our clothing lanes. For the Foley track, I've looked at where the thighs are likely to rub together look here. And for the Foley Metallics, I've chosen points just after the down step, which is where we're likely to get a jostle, and when we're both feet off the ground, with any metal parts bouncing up. With the Notify selected, in the top right, you have the option to set the Notify Trigger Chance. I've reduced this for the metallic sounds, but test this out and see what works best for your projects and the sounds that you're using. If we go to the animation blueprint and go to the event graph. First of all, we're going to add a new variable, which is going to be a map or a dictionary. It's a really neat feature and it's basically an index list. And we can use the key, whatever item we place on the left hand side, to call up whatever the corresponding entry is on the right hand side. So if we go to add a variable and say we set this to an integer. Change the variable type to a map, and now we can have that integer linked to a string. So we could have one, two, three, four, five, and hello, my name is Valkyrie. And when we call a certain number, we'll get the string corresponding to that number. So what I've done here for the footstep map, on the left hand side we have the physical material, which is just a physical material object reference. And then we have the sound cue which is a sound cue object reference as well. Update this top section here and add at least two elements on the left hand side. We want the physical material metal and the physical material rubber. And on the right hand side, we've got the metal footstep sound and the tile footstep sound as well. So you can see how this is gonna work. We're going to do a line trace if the trace hits a metal physical object, it'll find the corresponding sound cue and let us play it. And the same if it hits a rubber physical material. So in the event graph, right click and type in footstep. And that's gonna get our event anim notify. Then we're gonna to cast to the third person character and the object is going to be a get player character. From the third person character node, we're gonna cast out, get the actor location. And we're gonna use this to set the line trace by channel start and end points. The start is gonna be the actor location and from this node as well, we want a minus vector node. And this lets us draw a line down on the z-axis by 200 points. 
also from the get player character node we're going to drag out and we're going to make an array because we want to ignore the player character when we're doing the line trace from the return value of the line trace we want a branch and hook that up to the execution out pin and from out hit we want to break hit result we have all of these options but the only option that we're after is the physical material option because we want to compare that to the items held in our map add a find node and it's a find map and then we're going to drag in the footstep map variable we created earlier and hooked it up to the top pin so now what it's going to do is it's going to say okay we've cast down we've got x physical material is that on here if it is we're going to move ahead and play the corresponding sound so from the boolean output of the find node we're going to run our branch which is connected to the branch here connected to the line trace this branch is going to check to see if we can find the footstep. If the physical material is found in the footstep map, that's true. We're going to add a new variable, which is called footstep sound. And that is just a sound cue object. We're going to set that with the sound cue object reference output from the find node. An is valid node. Then we're going to run to a cast third person character node again. Get the player character as the object and the footstep sound which we set earlier on is going to be input to a spawn sound attached node so next to get this mesh reference pull off from the as third person character type in mesh and scroll all the way to the bottom and we want the variables character get mesh and then we can plug that into the attached to component input on the spawn sound attached node now you'll notice that I've changed the location of the sound, I've lowered it by 75. That's because it sounded too high up to me. You might also need to make some changes depending on the size of your character. Now, if we can't find that physical material in the footstep map, then what we're going to do is just use a default sound. We're just going to use the metal footstep sound. Same steps, is valid, and then into the third person character, everything else is the same. Next we're going to update the static mesh physical material. This will spawn the sound that we want, but we'll need to change the physical material properties of our static meshes to get the actual effect we're after. That can be a bit time consuming, especially if you're working with a lot of assets. So what you can do instead is, if you go to your meshes, and select all of the meshes that you want to apply the sound to, right click, asset actions, and then bulk edit via property matrix. And in the upper right hand side, search for material. Here we have physical material and click on the little grid and that will allow you to apply any one of these physical materials to all of these assets on the left. We can go ahead and test this now. So I've assigned these all to the rubber physical material and these over here will just be default to the metal one. You can hear there's a slight difference, a little bit more of a metallic clang across these ones. I wanted to make it a bit more obvious just for testing purposes. If we get a beep sound, we drag this into the, the tile one, which is what we're using for the rubber physical material. We'll just plug that into the modulator and save that. And now we will walk around. Rubber sounds. Sounds like very squeaky shoes, but for testing that can be really useful. Now we're going to look at the foley and metallic foley in the animation blueprint. So as you can see, the setup here is very similar. We're not using the trace channel, but we have a map. We're doing the same sort of thing, and this time our key is a string. So jumpsuit and spacesuit. And then on the right hand side, we have the corresponding Foley sound. For the spacesuit one, again, I'm just using a placeholder sound. So let's talk through this one. So we need an extra variable for the Foley map. This one here with string on the left. Remember map in the middle is the type and then sound cue as an object reference here. 
Remember to update this section, the default value section, not this lower section here. We also need a for the sound variable, again with a sound cue object reference. And for the metallics one, the same again, for the metallics map, the jumpsuit and spacesuit strings still applied here, and with the metallics there as well. Now I've used the same metallics for each one, but of course we could have different metallics on a spacesuit, perhaps it would be more bulky or clunkier sounding metallics. This is again just to show you how we can do this. So just to walk through, for the clothing foley, we're again going to get our animation notify as an event for clothing. And for this section on metallics, we want the metallics one. We're going to cast to the third person character. Again, the get player character is the object. From there, a branch. As a third person character, we're going to check the clothing type and we're going to find that clothing type in the Foley map. If we can find it from the true output of that branch, we then run an output to set the Foley sound is valid. And then cast a third person character again, get player character as the object. And again, we go to a spawn sound attached node. Now for this one, I've not adjusted the location of the sounds. They seem to be about right where they're spawning. The Foley sound gets plugged in here, and the third person character is the mesh that we want to attach to component. And again, as a default option, if we can't find the clothing type in the Foley map, we're just going to default by using a beep sound. And again, is valid, routes through to the third person character node. The metallics one is exactly the same. The only difference is that we are calling the anim notify for the metallics. We're comparing the clothing type to the metallics map, not the standard Foley map. And I'm not using any alternative asset if we can't find the string that's listed in the map. And again, everything else kept the same. No other adjustments made. And that's it. We've only looked at the run animation sequence for the UE4 mannequin, but there's the walk animation sequence, idle, and whatever other movement your character has. By including clothing sounds, we can explore customized clothing like armor, and we can even expand the system further to include carry sounds for different weapons. Whatever you consider, remember not to overwhelm the player with too much sound. Focus on the purpose of the sound. Why are you using it, and why is it important to be there? Thanks for watching. Take care and enjoy making your own projects.